President Grimson, Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Song Ho, Senior Researcher of the Global Energy Cooperation Center at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, ROK. It is great honor and privilege to be a part of this wonderful gathering to share views on energy issues. I just wanted to point out that what Secretary Xiong from Singapore has given about the speech is that if, they, if we are in consensus, I'm sure that Korea wants to cooperate on responding to climate change. But I just saw he was sitting down here. I just wanted to point out, but he's uh, gone. So next time I'll see you. Uh, hello. So my presentation covers four topics, which represents climate change and sustainable development. And second, I want to talk about the overview on Korea's energy situation. And third, Korea's energy policy. And finally, the opportunities, opportunities in the Arctic. Before I get into the energy situation in Korea, I just want to go briefly about the climate change and sustainable development. The United Nations of the Future Report in 2011 identifies 15 global challenges, including climate change, energy, food, and science and technology, etc. And among others, sustainable development and the climate change remain one of the key issues to be addressed by the international community. And we now very well know that the climate change continues to worsen. Scientists have sounded an alarm saying that a temperature rise of over two degrees Celsius will pose a serious threat to Arctic animals and water supplies in tropical zones. And especially, I like this picture because I think if you can see the, because I like the penguins, if you can see the one penguin in the middle, I, I feel like he's uh, looking at me. It's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> So what about the Korea's response to the climate change? During the last century, Korea's average temperature rose by 1.7 degrees Celsius, which is about twice the world's average increase. Korea is faced with the daunting task of finding a new engine for economic growth that can create jobs, and new jobs, and deal with climate change at the same time. So what, what's the Korea's response to the climate change? There are key initiatives taking place to enhance global cooperation on this issue. To implement Korea's energy policy, Korea first aims to increase the portion of green ODA from 14% to 30% by 2020. Second, Korea has also launched the East Asia Climate Partnership and donated a total of $200 million since 2008 to assist developing countries in the, in the Asia Pacific region in their efforts to cope with the climate change. And third, the, the Global Green Growth Institute, which is called the GGGI, which was established in 2010 will strengthen the global green growth partnerships with developing, with developing countries by providing guidelines for green growth. I just want to talk about more 
on the international organizations such as GGGI and two other key international organizations in Korea. Global Green Growth Institute started as a nonprofit organization and developed into an international organization after 16 countries, including Korea, signed the agreement on June 2012. GGGI is the first international organization ever to be established in Korea, and it supports the emerging and developing countries that seek to develop the rigorous green growth economic development strategies. And second, Green Climate Fund, an international organization established in 2010, aims to promote the paradigm shift towards, towards low emission and climate resilient development pathways by providing support to developing countries in terms of finance. Third, Green Technology Center, it's called the GTC, provides the support, the establishment of national green technology policy and green tech and networks for global cooperation. So we see that there are three Gs in triangle formed through the establishment of cooperative links among GGGI, GCF, and GTC. So I just want to quick quickly move on to the energy situations in Korea. Korea is the 10th biggest energy consumer in the world and the fifth biggest oil importer and the seventh biggest CO2 emitter in the world. So why we have such, a, such a high figures is because Korea's economy is led by energy intensive industries, industries such as heavy machineries, shipbuildings and chemicals, and automobiles, etc. So to run our economy, we need a lot of energy. But like the Deputy General from Germany has mentioned that uh, importing 95% of the oil, Korea also imports about 96% of oil from the foreign sources. So more about the energy import. So Korea imports 96% of its resources in 2012, and Middle East is critical supplier in meeting Korea's energy demand. And Korea's energy dependence on the Middle East oil is particularly high, reaching 85%. Accordingly, diversifications of importing routes is one of the Korea's priorities to ensure a stable energy supply. Just want to move on. To so energy profile would be like this. So share of the fossil fuels accounts for about over 70%, and about 12% for nuclear and about 2.7% for renewable energy. And we have a energy provided in Japan. Just wanted to point out that they're very similar to our uh, Korea's energy profile. In terms of self-sufficient rate, Korean government strives to strengthen energy cooperation with resource abundant countries by increasing country's energy sufficiency rate over the last few years. And Korea increased self-sufficient rate from 4.2% in 2007 to about 14% in 2011. Oops, sorry. But nonetheless, Korea's energy self-sufficiency rate is still very low with about 14% compared to other countries. So I just want to briefly talk about the Korea's energy policy.
The goal of the Korea's energy policy is to reduce Korea's dependency on fossil fuels and increase the share of the clean, clean energy. The bar chart shows that Korea's future energy mix, which the government plans to achieve by 2030, and if it's emphasized the shift away from fossil fuels, particularly from coal to renewable energy from 2% to 11% by 2030. And Chairman, you can always let me know if I uh, go over the limits. Just as, cut it. As quickly as possible. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, President Park geun on energy. She pointed out that it is important to enhance energy cooperation diplomacy through stability and liability. So there are three national priorities. First, securing a stable energy demand and supply. Second, expanding the renewable energy use. And third, enhancing the safety in nuclear energy operation. So Korea plans to expand the share of the long-term contracts for oil and gas import from 76% to 85% in 2030. And as all you, you all know that on shale gas, implementations on the shale gas for Korea, Korea plans to expand the imports of shale gas to 20% of all natural gas imports by 2030. So Korea's second national energy plan is expected to take off in the second half of this year. I think, I believe it's going to be about uh, around November, December, I think. So the Global Energy Cooperation Center, we are involved. It's called the GECC. And, we, and GECC provides real-time information to the Korean energy companies, getting information from diplomatic missions overseas, and that we transmit it to our Korean energy companies by emails. And Korean companies love what the ministry do for them. So I want to talk about the opportunities in the Arctic. See, I know all the uh, energy experts and speakers uh, have mentioned about how much uh, the estimations of uh, resources in the Arctic, about 90 million barrels of undiscovered oil and 1,670 TCF of technically uh, recoverable natural gas. <coughs> and here, this picture I wanted to show you, the Korean icebreaker uh, ship went uh, to sail uh, last month, and it's on the explorations. Uh, I believe they found the, uh, the methane uh, gas, uh, probably uh, evidence for uh, gas hydrates. So the activities that Korea is doing at the first shipping, first through the Northern Sea route uh, last, last month, carrying a uh, cargo of 37,000 tons of oil and acquire one third of the Canadian MGM Energy's 60% stake in the Umiya gas reserve. And finally, the opportunities for Korea is, is to expand the energy shipping through the north, northern sea route. And second, resources, explorations, more, more explorations, but uh, I know that there are some problems like uh, yeah, environmental uh, problems, and that's very, uh, got to be careful about that. Uh, so, and, and to expand the energy cooperation with the Arctic Circle uh, and other international organizations and NGOs. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>